All right, hello. Hey, this is gonna be our last dissection video, right? And um, just for a challenge, I'm gonna to try to do it all in one take. Uh, it's the eyeball. I'm gonna dissect it in front of you, see how it goes. Here it comes, whoop, <laughs> there's the eyeball. And um, taking a look at this, you know, I'm gonna zoom in it a little bit. Ooh, there's that eyeball. Now, um, obviously you can kind of tell the front and the back, right? You're anatomist. So um, there is some external anatomy that you can see, actually we'll start here on the back. Now, um, beforehand I removed a bit of eye muscle. Um, so there's eye muscle here, there's little remnants of it, so that's what this um, brownish reddish stuff is. But then you see this very obvious kind of stub sticking out here, and that's the optic nerve. Then there's a bit of, of fat and muscle, but then you can see the obvious wall of the eyeball here. That's called the sclera. And then this part here is the cornea. And so cornea, sclera. The cornea and the sclera layers are actually continuous with each other. And I'll talk about um, how you can have a transparent layer like that in lecture. And that's really uh, all you can see right now. And so this is the challenge, actually, to, uh, to cut open the eyeball um, because, oh, it's actually not so bad. Um, the, the wall of it is, um, is so thick. And um, actually, I, what I did is I, I did, um, I'm using a new scalpel blade, so it's always a good thing. A new scalpel blade is your dissection friend. And the, one of the reasons why I'm doing this in front of you is that there's some anatomy here that you can really just see when, when you just open up the eye. Um, so I'm cutting through the sclera here. Maybe I'll get some scissors. And okay, I'm going to go back to scalpel and we shall see what we've got. <laughs> this is a beautiful dissection, right? Uh, look at her skill. It's like a surgeon. Okay. It's not easy to grip onto this thing. Okay. So, painfully, you can see that there is this gel-like material here. All right. And that, that's the stuff that I kind of wanted you to be able to see right away. And um, the, that gel-like material is the, the vitreous humor. And the vitreous humor is kind of in the way for us being able to see other stuff. So uh, you have to invariably kind of get rid of it. I'm just going to trim this piece off. Um, so um, we're looking at the side that's towards the retina. And um, you can see that gel-like material, and then you can see that circle inside. That's the lens. OK, so let's just kind of push this out. This one. OK, so vitreous humor coming out. Hmm, that's nice to look at. And 
here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this lens out. Now, we're gonna be learning two muscles in here. The muscles at first will not look like muscles because, and this is a little bit of retina I'm pulling away, um, because they're so black and we're not used to seeing that darkness with muscles. But um, when, I, when I'm pulling this lens out, I'm actually pulling it away from the muscle that moves it. And, and that's called the, um, the choroid. Uh, there we go. I'm sorry, the, the ciliary muscle is the name of the muscle. I'll, I'll point out the choroid in a second. So um, there's the lens, and that's not as transparent as it obviously would have been in life. And that's true of the cornea as well. Okay. And so... Still more vitreous humor. All right. And so, you know, I'm gonna cut this down. I, what I'm finding is that not enough light is getting in and you can't quite see stuff. And so I'm gonna cut this down and uh, allow you to be able to, to get a better view of stuff. Okay. So with me kind of scraping along here, um, I think you can now see some, some striations that go in this direction. These are both circular shaped muscles. And when they contract, it's like a ring coming in. And then it relaxes, it goes out. And both of the muscles that I'm going to point at to you um, are like that. So um, when you look at this, you know, I'm going to move things. I'm going I'm to shift so there's more light. OK. Now, um, here, uh, you can definitely see those striations. And then I think you can see an edge and a muscle that is lower. Um, sometimes when we teach this, we, we uh, liken it to stadium seating, where there's an outer ring of seats and then an inner ring of seats, you know, like a coliseum or something like that. So that, you know, I'm kind of lifting up this muscle and then there's this black ring just behind it and then you can see this opening so this opening is the um, pupil and it's the iris that is this smaller muscle that from our uh, viewpoint is lower down so that's the iris and then this larger uh, wider muscle this is the ciliary muscle. So ciliary muscle, iris, just down in there. And um, I think, you know, when I kind of shift it around, you can, you can see that there's these, those, those two layers. Um, there's an edge right there. Okay. Then let's take a look at where the back side of the eyeball is. And um, you can see here that there's this, this thin tissue. This again is something that you, you kind of can only see at the beginning of the dissection and then you invariably have to kind of push it around to look at other things and it never is quite the same. So this tan tissue that is covering up this shiny back, that is the retina. So the retina is right here. But here, you know, I can lift the retina up. The retina 
is where all those photoreceptors are and those other neurons that are receiving the signal from the retinas and processing it partially. So um, you can see that there's this layer. It's definitely not black. It's kind of shiny. And that's called the tapetum lucidum. It is not something that we as humans have. It is something that for animals that see better at night, have good night vision, causes the eye shine, they have that. So, you know, cats, deer, you know, the, you're driving around at night and you can see the, their shining eyes. That's because they have vitreous humor. Um, but we do not, so if you looked in a human eyeball, we wouldn't have that. But what we would have is just like what's over here, which is black. Now, um, this black and this shiny is really all part of the same layer called the choroid layer. And that pr provides nutrients to the retina layer. The retina uh, is is very metabolically expensive and so that the choroid layer and then this is like the tapetum lucidum portion of the choroid layer and oh um, and then one more thing is um, you know when I push this around you'll notice that there's a place where it kind of stays attached is that? Let's see. Uh, you know what? I, I might have dissected a little bit into it. I think it's just right here. Um, but in in your dissection, I think maybe we'll be. Oh, it's it's right here. Um, there's a little place where the retina stays attached, and that's because all of the ganglion cells. It's a kind of neuron that is in the retina. The, all their axons are funneling together at that one spot, on that one spot, and that's the spot that goes to the optic nerve. And so you can see how this, a little bit of stuff in front of it, but from from here to here, optic nerve, and um, that's called the optic disc. It's also the blind spot, so we don't have photoreceptors there but um, just the place where the axons are funneling in to make the optic nerve. Okay, that's it.